Hey, how you doing today? My name is Relia and thanks for stopping by. Today we're going to go over the Master Trials. The first thing we want to do is eat a 3 up attack recipe that's going to last us for 30 minutes. Always make sure to save before you start the end trials because I always thought it was so frustrating if you failed the end trials and then had to fast travel back and it just took forever. Just save before you get in there. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. In the first floor, what you really want to do is stick and move. If you stay in one place for too long, you're gonna get hit by one of the arrows just flying by. Use your remote bombs to take out the Stokoblins, and after they've taken one hit, make sure to take out their heads. You can just use one of their arms, or you can use one of the spears that they drop. After that, just make sure to stay out of the range of the archer, and again, you can just use one of your remote bombs to take him out as well. There are tons of metal weapons that you can pick up in this room, just make sure not to get hit by lightning. In floor 2, you're going to use your remote bombs to take out the electric bats over on the right side of the skull. They are super easy to take out, just don't get too close because they do attract lightning very, very easily. Do not run into the skull. What you want to do is throw in your rolly bomb. Throw in your square bomb, and then once you go in, the skeletal Lizophos are going to come out. If you do it just right, you can actually take them out with both bombs at the same time, and you won't even have to fight them. If you miss with the first bomb, just wait until the opportunity strikes to blow them up with the second bomb. For floor 3, you want to come around to this right side, and you're going to use your remote bombs on these electric choo-choos. After you take out both of the electric choo-choos, you can climb up the platform, you can grab the night shield from the chest, and then go ahead and start taking out the bone moblins. Use your remote bombs to take out the bone moblins, and then keep your distance when fighting them. Use your weaker weapons, like your spears, to go ahead and take out the skulls. In total, there are only 5 Bone Moblins on this floor, so they really shouldn't be too much trouble. Once you get close to a pile of bones, they'll start to stand up, throw your bombs at them, and don't blow it up until they stand up. And if you're looking for that one last Bone Moblin, just look to see where all the bodies start gathering, and that's where he's at. Floor 4 is one of the more difficult floors. All you have to do is throw out your rolly bomb as far as you can, and then your square bomb. Use those to try and get a couple of the bone bokoblins off of their horses. Once they're stuck against a wall and grouped up, that's a perfect time to use your bombs and try to blow a couple of them up. Make sure to quickly use your spear to finish them off. If you see one coming at you, all you do is drop your bomb and blow it up behind you. One thing that I think is a cool little trick is using stasis to go ahead and pull the bone bokoblins off of their horses because they just stay in place. It only takes one hit to take them down and then one hit to finish them off. Check this out, I feel like I'm part of the walking dead here. They're all, they're all walking slowly trying to find meat and brains. Brains! They're really just leading me to the other bone bokoblins so I can take them out too. Boom! So off in the distance there are a couple more bone bokoblins on their horses. Go ahead and sneak over that way and do the same thing. You're going to use your remote bombs to go ahead and take them down. Just watch out because these ones do have electric arrows which will hurt pretty bad. Go ahead and finish them off one at a time and then you're gonna be pretty much done. I don't know how this one got in this little room over here, but hey, making my job easy. And then it's off to the next floor. The fifth floor is a Stalnox, and they are just as easy as a Hinox. All you have to do is pop them in the eye with your bow and arrow, and then go ahead, rush them, and do as much damage as you possibly can. Use a bigger weapon, like a spiked mopping club. Once he stands up, I like to stay fairly close by, and then run away last second. Using the bow and arrow, again, you're going to just hit him in the eye, once he goes down, use that Spike Moblin Club again to get a couple more hits in.
if you do a critical hit and his eye pops out, all you have to do is keep dealing damage to his eye until his eye bursts. If the Stalnox is coming at you and you're having trouble getting that critical hit, or you're worried that you're not going to be able to hit him real easy, go ahead and use your stasis to stop him in time just long enough to get that critical hit, and then you'll be able to finish him off just fine. Be sure to pick up all of the weapons that he drops because they're all going to be extremely useful in the upcoming floors. Floor 6 is a well deserved break and the main thing that you need to get out of this floor is that fairy. Go very, very slow when you go get the fairy because you do not want to accidentally scare it away. Pick up all the food, blow up the fish, little hillbilly fishing right there. Don't forget to pick up them fish. And get rid of all the really bad weapons that you're not going to use. The worst thing is when you take a weapon away from an enemy and you can't pick it up because you've got too many Boko Spears. Pick up everything from the chest and be sure to equip your armor right away. When cooking, the most, most important thing to remember is to cook up one hearty ingredient at a time so you get those full recoveries. You can get multiple full recoveries on this floor. Floor 7 is really hot, so don't forget those pants. All you have to do is blow up one choo-choo, two rocks, and a rock octorock. You can throw your rusty weapons at the rock octorock and he'll spit it back out at you, and he'll usually just hit you with it, dealing damage, so don't do that. Floor 8 is three different Lazafos that you can just shoot at range. Super easy, especially if you get those headshots, you're going to save yourself a bunch of arrows. Why did this guy just dump down there? Alright, I'll deal with him later. Anyway, just keep fighting these guys, lob your arrows over, they really can't hit you very easily. If you want to, you can always fly over there and take them out a little bit closer. I personally, I just like to take them down at range because I'm not trying to get hit. Arch your arrows to take out the last Lazafos who's a little bit higher than all the other ones. And then take out this last crazy guy who was uh, jumping around doing his own thing. And then this floor is done, just like that. On floor 9, the first thing you want to do is take out the fire whiz robe off to the left before fighting any of the bad guys that are inside the skull. Do your best to take him out quickly without alerting the guys that are inside that skull because if they all come out at once, you're going to have a bad time. Get on top of the skull and throw your bombs in over and over and over again to do a bunch of damage. This is great because you're not going to take any hits while you're up here and you can just take these guys out. Unless they see you, then you need to come take them out as quickly as possible and if you take a hit, just try to get them into a one-on-one -on -one fight instead of trying to fight all of them at the same time. Time. Hopefully you did enough damage when you're throwing bombs into the skull and it's really not going to be that hard to take out the last couple of enemies. Throw your remote bombs in to clear out the last Lazafos that's in here and you're going to be good to go. Just make sure to rush him and take him out before he starts doing his little flame fire breath attack. Tell me in the comments down below if I did a good impression. Floor 10 has one Lazafos that you can take out pretty easily. Just go straight over to him and just hit him in the face with a bunch of bow and arrow hits. And then after that, the next thing you gotta do is worry about these moblins that are across the way. You can use your frost blade to hit the moblin, freeze him, and then push him into the lava, which is ideally what you wanna do. Uh, for me, I almost got it to work, but he somehow he's surviving uh, knee deep in, in hot lava. Uh, anyway, go down there, take him out, just be careful because no, 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 the floor is lava! Ah, this is where that full heal really comes in handy. If you need to, you can use stasis to buy yourself a little bit of time, and then also you can use your electric blade to try to disarm the moblin. Sometimes he'll hold on to his weapon, I'm not gonna lie, he totally faked me out right here with this little lore thing. I thought he was gonna strike. Take the Moblin's weapon and finish him off.
there's a third and final moblin waiting for you at the top. What you want to do is use your electric weapon to disarm him and take his weapon. The frost blade will make very quick work of him. I wanted to push him off so bad and got so close, but he just wouldn't go. Before you leave floor 10, do not forget to pick up this one chest if you do nothing else because this one chest makes the whole rest of the final trial way, way easier. So it's on this middle part of the platform. If you look over the edge, you're going to see a chest in the lava. Go ahead and use Magnesis to pull up towards you. And let's go ahead and take a look at what's inside. Three ancient arrows, which we're going to be using on the Lynels. Floor 11 is an Igneo Talus. What you're going to need to do is use your Frost Blade to cool him off before fighting him. What you do not want to do is jump on top of him as soon as he starts to form. You don't want to do that because apparently he catches back on fire as soon as he starts to form and that's going to hurt. So use your frost blade, take him down, and then you can get on top of him. Use your sledgehammer to take him out super, super quick. Once you do a slam, you know that he's going to be coming down, so do whatever you can to try and stay on top of Igneo Talus. If you do get thrown off, don't worry about it. It only hurts you a quarter of a heart. Just jump back on top of him and finish him off. Floor 12 is very much like floor 6. Go for those fairies and be very, very slow about it because you don't want them flying away. Ah, I swear that happens to me at least once every time. Just duck, it'll make it easy. Make sure to pick up the spicy peppers, blow up the fish, and pick up any other ingredients in the room. Grab the items and armor from the chest and make sure to equip it right away. When it comes to cooking, make sure to make plenty of cold resist recipes as well as attack up recipes because you're going to need them. Why do you need cold resist recipes? Well, the next five floors all take place in the frozen tundra, so you're going to need that warmth. If you use the woodcutter's axe, don't forget to switch back over to a decent weapon because you're going to be fighting a couple of bokoblins. In the cold areas, you got one of two choices. You can either use a cold resist recipe or you can hold on to a flame blade. Use your remote bombs to take out the two ice rocks and then take out the frozen choo-choo. Use your remote bombs to do your best to split up the bokoblins and then from there what you really want to try to do is fight them one at a time as best as you can. You don't want to try to do a three on one. It's best to try to take yourself away from the archer so in that way you're not going to be taking those extra hits. Woo! You almost got me there. If you can get the bokoblins in a one on one battle they're usually pretty simple to take down. Don't be afraid to throw your bad weapons at the enemies because if they break on their face, you're going to get that critical hit from when it hits them in the head and then you get another double damage for when the weapon breaks. Floor 14 can be pretty tough. You really just want to try to fight the enemies one at a time, same as you're doing before, especially because you're going to have a lot of bigger moblins uh, towards the end of this fight. Go ahead and fight this Lizophos and break him away from all of the other enemies and it's going to be much, much easier to deal with. Dealing with the Lazafos can be really difficult just because they kind of crazy. They jump all over the place. They can be really hard to pin down sometimes, but make them come to you and then fight your fight. You can put them into a stasis and then you can charge them and take them down really easily. Just remember to fight your fight. They're really easy in a one-on-one -on -one battle. Next is the blue Bokoblins. You can sneak up behind them and sneak strike them. Super easy to take them down after you take out the first one. Take out the second one by sneaking up behind him. And ah, he turned around and got me. Oh, I thought he was going to get me. All that's left is one last blue bokoblin and then the silver moblin. All right, so the silver moblin is the last enemy that you need to take out. Just sneak up behind him. Try to get that sneak strike if you can. And if you can't, that's all right. You can use a flame weapon to take him down, but just be sure that you save a flame weapon for floor 16. Don't forget that before you leave, there's a patch of ice that has a chest in it. And in that chest 
our three ancient arrows. For floor 15, what you really want to do is get to the left side of the wall and draw this moblin over to you. He's pretty simple to take down. Just don't go over to the other side of the wall just yet. You're going to isolate the ice wizrobe after this, and you don't want to draw over all of the bokoblins as well. See what I did there? Isolate. You'll find the wizrobe on the far left hand side, kind of near where you found the moblin. Go ahead and use your stasis to take him down. Once he hits the floor, hit him as much as you can and try to take him out without the bokoblin seeing you. And of course, if the bokoblins do see you, just be ready for that battle right away. One of them does have flame arrows, so watch out for that because it will do a bunch of damage. Just always keep moving. You can try to isolate yourself from those bokoblins by drawing them to the other side of the wall if you need to. The same tactic applies. Having a one-on-one -on -one fight is way easier than trying to fight multiple enemies at the same time. All that's left is to mop up this last silver moblin. Oh, you're not a moblin. Bokoblin. And then you're moving on to the next floor. Hopefully you saved a flame weapon for this one because you're going to need it. This is an ice stone talus. Uh, I think they call him something else. And in case you're wondering, you can't heat him up until after he fully forms. This is a frost talus. And what you want to do is not jump on top of him right away, just like with the fire talus. Uh, because this one's going to freeze you and that's not good. Do whatever damage you can before he knocks you off, and then run away from his little ice attacks because you don't want to get frozen. Once he does turn frozen again, use a fire weapon to heat him up. From there, that's going to do a critical hit, which will knock him down long enough for you to climb on top. Once you're on top, make sure you're using that iron sledgehammer to just do as much damage as you possibly can, and you're going to take him out super, super quick. Just remember that when you slam the sledgehammer down, that's going to make him go down, and I personally, I like to try to jump, so then that way I can float and stay on top just long enough to finish him off. And if you fall off, that's alright, just either hit him with an arrow, or wait for him to go frozen again, and then use your flame weapon. Mentally, start getting ready for floor 17 because you're going to be fighting a Lionel. And this is one of the first spots that you're going to want to use your ancient arrows. The ancient arrows make it so easy, it almost feels like cheating. It's just. He's gone. Floor 18 is the last little break that you get. Remember, go slow on the fairies. You don't want to lose out on them like I did earlier. Pick up all of the items and then start cooking. Remember, each hearty ingredient turns into a full recovery. The break was nice, but let's get back into it. This next floor, floor 19, is probably one of the hardest floors. Honestly, shield deflecting for me is such a big pain. If I can, I avoid shield deflecting like it's the plague. I... I just really don't want to go down and have to start all the way over again because you work so hard to get to this point. In this case, I don't think you could beat this level without shield deflecting. And if you have trouble with it like me, just do your best not to panic, pull out another shield, and get ready to go. You got this. Alright, and there it is. So after you shield deflect the first guardian, you're going to have two more that pop up at the same time. Use this tree over here as a shield, so that way you only have to fight one guardian at a time. Alright, so I'm one and one. Let's see if we can do this one, and... Boom! Nailed it. Let's see if we can go ahead and keep this winning streak up. I want to be just sick and tired of winning. Sick and tired of it. I think that's how Chump talks, right? Eh, that wasn't very good. There it is! Next, come back over to that same tree, and there's a little notch in the tree that you can hide in because there's going to be three guardians that are going to try and get you at the same time. And if you can stay in this one little spot, you'll only have to fight one. This is one of the other hardest parts when I first tried to do this floor, was I didn't know where to go. When there's three of them, well, what do you do? Hide right here by the tree, and you're going to be okay. Just stay calm, and even if you go a little bit too early, again, just stay calm, try to stay out of the fire, and you'll be all right. Hey, I just can't catch a break right now. So I just want to show you, sometimes it can be hard to shield deflect. And you know what, just do your best and, and you'll get it. You don't really need a shield after this level anyway, so just keep trying. Just keep trying and, and you'll be all right. Remember, you got a couple of extra fairies at this point, hopefully. Oh man, two shields left. Two shields left. 
And uh, this is supposed to be the guide on how to do this. I could skip all this and just show you how to- that I did it perfectly every time, but you know what? I thought it was better for you to see that just because you take a hit doesn't mean that you can't come back strong. Floor 20 has a guardian on the back side of the room. Just to your immediate right, there's a couple of horses. Go ahead and sneak up behind them and jump on. Tame them a little bit before you get over to the Guardian because it'll be a little bit easier to control. If you still have any longer weapons like a spear, make sure to switch over to one of those because you're going to want that extra reach when you're fighting the Guardian. Link always hits to his right side, so always go to the left side of the Guardian and then circle around on the right side. Then that way you can just keep on hitting him and hitting him. You'll be able to knock off some of his legs nice and easy. But remember, always try to keep the Guardian on your right-hand side. If the Guardian does get a shot off on you, make sure to use that fire as an updraft, and then use your bow to stun him by getting a shot right in his eye. From there, just take off his legs and finish him off. Before you leave, there's a bunch of arrows in the middle fountain area... uh... thing? Floor 21 has one of those really annoying flying guardians. If you climb up one of the towers, you'll get a really nice vantage point. I like to get to the middle tower, and then climb up to get to the chest. This chest has five bomb arrows in it. When you jump down, carefully use your bomb arrows to hit the flying guardian right in the eye. Once you land, just run around to the back side of those pillars and hide out for a little bit. You can climb up to the top and then do it again. Honestly, these flying guardians or sky watchers, whatever you want to call them, are super annoying. The better play is actually to use one of your ancient arrows. If you hit it right in the eye, it only takes one ancient arrow, and then this level's over, and you don't have to deal with this guy anymore. Floor 22 can be rough, but you know what, you're going to be fighting all of these guardians one at a time. You've got a guardian, a flying guardian, and a guardian turret. Run around to the left side over towards the wall, and stay away from the flying guardian. The first one that we're going to take out is the guardian stalker. If he sees you, you can either run away to reset and wait for him to get a little bit closer, or you can jump down, pop him in the eye, and get that critical hit to stun him. Once he is stunned, be sure to keep stunning him with your bow and arrow as needed to make sure that he doesn't get a shot off on you. You want to make sure that you stay on the far side of the Guardian turret, so in that way the Guardian turret doesn't try to lock onto you. Remember, keep the Guardian stunned by hitting him in the eye, and then also just keep hitting him until you finish him off. Once you do take out the Guardian, make sure to get out of the way, so in that way that turret Guardian doesn't get you. Do your best to stay hidden. There are enough items to keep you hidden from that turret Guardian. Climb up to the top and do the same thing that you were doing with the Guardian. Use your bigger two-handed weapons to do as much damage as possible because you're not really going to need them after this point anyway. And then use your arrows to keep him stunned. With the turret Guardian out of the way, there's nothing left except for that flying Guardian. And you know what you're going to do this time? Is you're going to use that ancient arrow, hit him right in the eye, and take him out in one shot. The only reason you wouldn't use your Ancient Arrow on this Flying Guardian is if you have only one Ancient Arrow left. You need to save that Ancient Arrow for the next floor, and that's where you're going to use it to take out a Lionel. As soon as you get into floor 23, you need to start throwing out your bombs to protect yourself from all of the Moblins that are riding on horseback. 
the most important thing you need to do is take out that Lionel right away, because he's going to be super deadly. The red moblins can all be taken out with a single bomb, which is super easy. The only thing is you have to watch out because they all have really powerful weapons. Do your best to use the trees and the walls to your advantage, and if you can take out multiple moblins with a single bomb, make sure to do it. It's worth it even to take a little bit of damage. I just realized, have I been saying moblins this whole floor? What the heck am I talking about? These are red bokoblins. They only take one hit. Anyway, uh, once they start to uh, thin out a little bit, you can use your arrows to take them down with a single hit. Just make sure to watch out. There is a guardian turret that will try to get you. Just hide yourself behind one of the trees. If you feel like it, you can use stasis to take the bokoblins off their horses. Look at that little tushy. There may be a couple more Bokoblins on the other side of the map, so get closer to them, still staying out of the way of the turret, and use your whistle to call them over. Once I call them over, I like to set up little booby traps, so then that way I can blow them up right as they get close enough. Uh, booby trap number two, go! The last thing you need to do is just take out that turret guardian. Super easy, you've done it before. Use a horse to be able to close the gap so that way you're not getting hit. Or if you really want to, you can shield parry. Uh, you saw my shield parry skills, so I'm, I'm not gonna do that. I'm gonna go ahead and climb up this tower and I'm gonna take him out. Simple as that. Equip the strongest two-handed weapon you have and just go to town. Uh, I've never had this happen where I just kept going and going and going. I, I feel like the Energizer Bunny here. He's just, I'm just able to take him out. He doesn't even try to find me. I don't know what's going on, but I like it. This, ne this never happens. Normally he will try to lock on to you at, at least once. Ah, oh, darn, I spoke too soon. Okay, so all you have to do is stun him with your arrow like you've been doing before. Once you're done with this turret guardian, there's nothing left to do except for to go pick up your Master Sword. A fully charged, 60 damage Master Sword. Thank you so much for watching this video. I really hope that you enjoyed it. If you're new to the channel, please be sure to subscribe. I have a passion for gaming and just want to share that with you. I'm going to try to put out a new video every two to three days, and I'm going to do my best to stream at least once a week. If you're not new to the channel, let me know what game that you want me to stream or do tips and tricks on for the SNES Classic once it comes out. Again, thank you very much. 